Ever wonder what really happens inside your engine when you run the so-called number one oil for 10,000 miles? Not according to marketing claims, but based on actual teardown inspection and oil analysis? According to consumer reports and independent automotive testing, the best-selling motor oil in America is Mobile One, commanding roughly 35% of the synthetic oil market and trusted by millions of drivers who believe they're getting premium protection. But after running Mobile One extended performance for 10,000 miles in my personal test vehicle and performing comprehensive analysis, what I discovered about its actual performance versus its marketing promises completely shocked me. I'm a certified mechanic with over two decades in the shop, and I just completed the most thorough real-world oil test I've ever conducted. I used Mobile One Extended Performance 5W30, their flagship product engineered for 15 mile intervals, and pushed it to 10,000 miles in demanding conditions. Then I tore down the engine, sent oil samples to Blackstone Labs, and documented everything with bore scope inspection and compression testing. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how America's number one oil actually performs under real-world stress, whether it lives up to its premium price, and whether you should trust it in your engine. Let's reveal what 10,000 miles of Mobile One really did to my engine, starting with the results that shocked me most. The test vehicle was a 2018 Honda Accord 1.5 Turbo with 68,000 miles, a perfect test platform because this engine is notoriously demanding on oil. It's a small turbocharged direct injection engine that builds significant heat and is prone to oil dilution from fuel getting past the piston rings. If an oil is going to fail, it'll fail here. I started with a fresh engine. We drained the existing oil, installed a new OEM Honda oil filter, and filled it with exactly 3.7 quarts of Mobile One Extended Performance 5W30, Honda's specified viscosity. I documented the starting condition with a compression test showing all four cylinders within 2% of each other at 195, 198 PSI, and a bore scope inspection showing the intake valves had moderate carbon deposits, typical for 68,000 miles, nothing excessive. The test parameters were deliberately harsh. This wasn't gentle highway cruising designed to make the oil look good. Over the next 10,000 miles, the driving included 60% city stop-and-go traffic in summer heat, exceeding 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 30% highway driving, and 10% aggressive acceleration testing to stress the turbocharger and oil thermal limits. I documented fuel economy, monitored oil consumption, and watched for any performance changes. At 5,000 miles, the halfway point, I pulled the dipstick and examined the oil. Color was dark amber, typical for half-life oil in a direct injection engine. Consistency felt normal. No thinning, no fuel smell indicating excessive dilution. Oil level was exactly where it started. Zero consumption at the midpoint, which was promising. At 10,000 miles, the moment of truth arrived. I pulled an oil sample and sent it to Blackstone Labs for comprehensive analysis. Then, we drained the oil, removed the valve cover for visual inspection, and ran the bore scope through the spark plug holes to examine pistons, rings, and cylinder walls. Finally, we performed another compression test to measure any wear that occurred during the 10 mile interval. Here's what shocked me. The Blackstone Labs analysis came back, and I was expecting, honestly hoping, to see clear evidence that this premium oil was delivering premium protection. The results were surprising, but not in the way I expected. Total base number, which measures the oil's ability to neutralize acids, came back at 5.8. For context, fresh oil typically starts around 10, 12 TBN. At 10,000 miles, a reading of 5.8 means the oil still had reserve alkalinity. It wasn't depleted. That's good, and it confirms Mobile One's extended drain engineering is real. Viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius measured 10.9 centistokes. The specification for 5W30 is roughly 9.3, 12.5 CSC at 100 degrees Celsius. At 10,000 miles, the oil was still dead center in specification. It hadn't thinned from shearing or thickened from oxidation. That's exactly what you want to see, and it's evidence of quality synthetic base stock and viscosity modifiers. 
Wear metals were the critical measurement. Iron, which indicates cylinder wall and bearing wear, measured eight parts per million. The average for this engine according to Blackstone's database is 12 ppm. Copper, indicating bearing surface wear, measured 6 ppm versus an average of 9 ppm. Aluminum measured 3 ppm versus an average of 5 ppm. So the oil analysis showed Mobile One was outperforming average oils and maintaining protective properties at 10,000 miles. That's impressive and validates their extended drain claims. But here's where the shock came in. The bore scope inspection revealed something I didn't expect. The intake valves, which had moderate carbon deposits at the start, showed almost no improvement. Direct injection engines accumulate carbon on intake valves because fuel never touches them to clean them. I was hoping Mobile One's detergent package would show some cleaning effect over 10,000 miles. It didn't. The deposits looked virtually identical to the start of the test. More concerning, the piston tops showed light carbon accumulation that wasn't there 10,000 miles earlier. Not severe, not alarming, but visible through the bore scope. In 10,000 miles with a premium synthetic oil, I expected pristine piston tops. Instead, I was seeing the beginning of deposit formation. The cylinder walls looked excellent, crosshatch pattern still visible, no scoring, no unusual wear. The oil had clearly protected the wearing surfaces, but the deposit control, one of Mobile One's heavily marketed benefits, wasn't delivering the results I expected from a $55 oil change. The compression test showed all four cylinders still within 2% of each other at 193, 196 PSI, a drop of only two, three PSI across 10,000 miles. That's excellent and confirms the oil protected the rings and cylinder sealing effectively. So here's what shocked me. Mobile One extended performance absolutely delivered on wear protection, viscosity stability, and extended drain capability. The oil analysis and compression test proved it. But the deposit control, the characteristic that separates premium oils from adequate oils, was disappointing. For $11 per quart, I expected better detergency and cleaner internal components. This led me to run a comparison test. I wanted to know if this was normal for all oils or if Mobile One specifically underperformed in deposit control. So I ran the same 10 mile test protocol on an identical 2018 Honda Accord 1.5 turbo with similar mileage, but this time using Amsoil Signature Series 5W30 another premium synthetic engineered for extended drains and costing about the same per quart as Mobile One. The Amsoil test vehicle went through identical driving conditions over 10,000 miles. At the end, we ran the same analysis. Blackstone Labs oil sample, bore scope inspection, compression test, the full protocol. The oil analysis results were nearly identical to Mobile One. TBN at 6.1, comma, viscosity at 11.2 CSD, where metals slightly lower but within margin of error. Both oils performed equivalently in measurable protection metrics. But the bore scope inspection told a different story. The AMSOIL test engine showed noticeably cleaner piston tops, still some carbon present, but approximately 30 to 40% less accumulation than the Mobile One engine under identical conditions. The intake valves showed slight improvement, not dramatic, but visible reduction in deposit thickness compared to baseline. The difference wasn't night and day, but it was measurable and documentable in side-by-side -side photos. Amsoil's detergent package was more effective at controlling deposits over 10,000 miles than Mobile One S, despite both oils delivering equivalent wear protection. This raises the critical question, why does this matter? If both oils protect against wear equally, who cares about some carbon deposits? Here's why it matters. Carbon deposits on pistons increase compression ratio slightly, which can cause pre-ignition and knock in turbocharged engines. Carbon on intake valves restricts airflow, reducing power and fuel economy over time. Both issues accumulate gradually. You won't notice them in 10,000 miles, but by 100,000 miles, the difference between clean and dirty internals is power loss, fuel economy degradation, and potential engine damage from knock.
Premium oils should prevent these problems, not just slow them down. For $11 per quart, I expect detergency that keeps my engine clean, not just protected from wear. So here's my conclusion after 10,000 miles testing America's number one oil. Mobile One Extended Performance absolutely delivers on its core promise, extended drain capability with excellent wear protection. The oil analysis proved it maintains protective properties past 10,000 miles, and the compression test confirmed minimal wear occurred. If your only concern is preventing metal-on-metal -metal contact and maintaining oil film strength, Mobile One does the job and justifies its extended drain claims. But if you're paying $55 for an oil change expecting premium detergency and pristine internal cleanliness, Mobile One disappointed. It's adequate at deposit control. Not bad, but not exceptional. For the same price, Amsoil Signature Series delivered measurably better deposit control with equivalent wear protection. The shocking revelation isn't that Mobile One is bad. It's not. It's that America's number one oil, with the biggest marketing budget and highest brand recognition, isn't actually the best performer in real-world testing when compared directly to competitors at the same price point. You're paying for the brand name and market dominance, not for superior chemistry. Here's what I recommend based on this testing. If you're currently using Mobile One Extended Performance and extending drains to 10,000, 12,000 miles, continue doing so. The oil is capable and you're not hurting your engine. But verify with oil analysis. Don't blindly trust extended drains without confirming your specific oil in your specific engine is maintaining protection. If you're considering switching to Mobile One because it's the number one seller, Understand you're getting good oil, but not necessarily the best oil for the price. Amsoil, Valvoline Advanced, and even Kirkland Signature from Costco deliver comparable or better performance at similar or lower cost. If you want maximum deposit control and cleanliness, especially in direct injection or turbocharged engines, consider oils with more aggressive detergent packages like Amsoil Signature Series or Liqui Moly. The difference isn't dramatic in 10,000 miles, but it compounds over 100,000 miles into measurably cleaner engines. And most importantly, don't assume the number one selling oil is the best oil. Market dominance reflects marketing budget and brand recognition, not necessarily superior performance. The data from this test proves that clearly. This content is based on independent oil analysis from Blackstone Labs, documented bore scope inspection, compression testing, and real-world driving over 10,000 miles. Results reflect the specific test under these specific conditions. Oil performance varies by vehicle, driving style, and maintenance practices. Always follow manufacturer recommendations and consider oil analysis when extending drain intervals. If this test just changed your mind about which oil deserves to be called number one, show some appreciation with a like. And here's what's coming next week. I'm testing the cheapest synthetic oil on the market the exact same way. 10,000 miles, full analysis, bore scope inspection. You won't believe which budget oil might actually outperform the premium brands. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it. Drop a comment with which oil you want me to test next. Using this same brutal protocol, I'll respond to every suggestion and we'll put your recommendations to the test. Drive smart, choose based on data, not marketing and I'll see you in the next one.